What up Fortnite fam, it's your boy Matt back at it again to bring you the latest and greatest tips and tricks to help make you a better Fortnite player. The new season is of course in full swing and whether you like it or not the spray meta seems here to stay. While pump shotguns are nowhere to be found, Epic did add a few new weapons that will require your aim to be at its very best. In today's video we're going to be going over the most optimal Fortnite settings for keyboard and mouse players in Chapter 3 Season 2. So let's get Get right into it. Now I know that we were all wishing for the return of the classic pump shotgun, but unfortunately it seems as if Epic is really trying to push the spray meta. I mean, it's now been two seasons since the pump was once again vaulted, and Epic really hasn't introduced any new strong shotguns or even buffed the existing ones for that matter. Unless you manage to find a high rarity striker shotty, pretty much any SMG can overpower you in a fight if your opponent has decent aim. This means that for you keyboard and mouse players, you're going to have to buckle down and bring your aim to a level it's never been at before, with SMGs being at the strongest point they've ever been. Your tracking aim is absolutely crucial this season, and for however long it takes Epic to change up the meta. There isn't one standalone sensitivity that will immediately improve your tracking aim, as everyone's playstyle is different, but for this season, we recommend staying on the low to medium side. Using a lower sensitivity, somewhere around 6-8% for both horizontal and vertical, will allow you to have solid control over your crosshair while still having great mechanics. A lower sensitivity will prevent you from making any unnecessary flicks, and will overall make it easier to aim onto your opponent. The best way to make sure you've chosen the right sensitivity for yourself is by free building in creative to make sure you can build efficiently, then hop into a trainer like Aimlab. Aimlab will assist you in honing your aiming skills that are so desperately needed for this season. Aimlab offers fully customizable exercise routines as well as detailed analysis of your skills. Your aim down sights or ADS sensitivity doesn't matter as much as it does on the controller, as it all just depends on how you're able to control your mouse. But for most players, a lower ADS sensitivity, anywhere from 35-50% to 50 works best. A low ADS sensitivity will allow you to have great control over your crosshair from the medium and long range, improving your chances of getting that go ahead beam on an opponent before pushing. The only real downside to playing on a low ADS sensitivity is the fact that it might be a little challenging to track your opponents from the close range, as you'll have to whip your mouse around decently fast. This isn't a huge deal though, since you'll be hip firing from the close range a majority of the time. However, if you are a player that likes to ADS from close range, then just increase your sensitivity until you're able to find a middle ground where you can have both solid close and long range control. Now that you've been able to find a comfortable sensitivity for yourself, you need to make sure that your building keybinds aren't holding you back. A good set of building binds should allow you to hit each building piece at the same time with different fingers. This will prevent you from being slowed down while you're building, as well as allowing you to utilize your movement to the fullest. Most players will make the mistake of choosing binds that are nearby each other, because it seems easier, when in reality, any binds that you can comfortably reach without having multiple keys on a single finger is what you want to go for. It should be known that almost all keyboard and mouse pros use a mouse that has at least two binds on the side of it. This makes it so you only need two building binds to be on your keyboard instead of four freeing up more room for other binds like for inventory slots and editing. We recommend having your wall and ramp binds on your mouse side buttons, as these are the easiest binds to hit. Since your fingers won't need to leave the WASD position when using these binds, you'll be able to move freely without any slowdowns. For your cone and floor pieces, we'd recommend binding one to your shift key and the other to a nearby bind like Q, E, F or C. This means that you'll only have one building bind designated to a WASD finger, which is almost perfectly optimal. It's pretty difficult to achieve 100% optimal binds without using your thumb to hit a bottom row key. This feels pretty uncomfortable and can cause you to accidentally jump with your spacebar when you don't want to, so we'd recommend not going that route unless it feels natural to you. If you took our advice on where to bind your building keys, then you should still have a few options available for your editing bind. There isn't one single key that will work best for everyone, but we recommend using either E, F or C. These keys would be hit with your pointer finger, which is typically the best for control and speed. Try each of these out and see which one feels the most comfortable for you. You're going to want to be able to spam this key rapidly, so hop into a creative island and practice your double and triple edits to make sure it feels comfortable. Now, we're sure most of you are 
already utilizing scroll wheel reset, but let's go over it briefly for those of you who aren't, as it's incredibly important. Set your secondary keybind to scroll wheel down for both your edit and reset binds. This will allow you to reset any edit by simply scrolling down on your scroll wheel. Controller players still need to hit three binds to do one reset, so make sure you're taking full advantage of your input by using this. Now that we've gone over your editing binds, let's talk about Confirm Edit on Release. Confirm Edit on Release was introduced with the launch of Chapter 2, so we've had a good amount of time to see if this setting is really worth it. When enabled, this setting will make your edits confirm upon releasing your left clip. This is much faster than having to hit your confirm bind for every edit, and will overall make your double and triple edits noticeably quicker. This setting is heavily favoured by those creative warriors out there with crazy fast mechanics, but most pro players choose to keep this setting disabled. You might be thinking, why would I have this disabled if it makes my edits faster? Well, although it does increase editing speed, it can have a negative effect on your crosshair placement and aim. You see, without confirm edit on release, you can freely move your crosshair around before confirming your edit. This will allow you to place your crosshair in a more optimal position near your opponent before you confirm to give yourself an easy shot to hit. This mechanic is most effective when taking right hand angles like a peanut butter edit. You can select the edit and then position yourself against the wall so you're ready to jump right as you confirm it. This is very hard to perform with confirm edit on release enabled and will lead to you being inconsistent. With that being said, you'll need to consider what you prioritize as a Fortnite player. If you already have pretty solid editing speed without confirm edit on release, then you're probably better off grinding without it and then just focusing on your crosshair placement. However, if you're a player who tends to lack in the editing category, go ahead and give confirm edit on release a shot and see if it improves your speed and consistency. Having confirm edit on release disabled will undoubtedly allow your crosshair placement to be more efficient, but there are still plenty of pro players who have gotten to where they are while having it enabled. It really just comes down to your ability to use the setting to the best of your ability. We've already covered the basic and most important keybinds for you keyboard and mouse players, but there are still a few other settings we need to take a look at. For your crouching bind, we recommend either using caps lock, left control, or a bottom row key like C. Using your pinky finger for crouching will allow you to fully strafe as you crouch since you won't need to move your WASD fingers. Your inventory keybinds will depend on how large your hands are as some of them will be challenging to reach. But the number keys are typically our go-to. If you have longer fingers, you can easily get away with using keys two through six as your inventory slots. Your sixth slot will be used for a healing item so you won't need to hit it super quickly, and the others can easily be hit with your pointer and ring finger. Obviously, if you have more easily reachable keys available, then you should bind what you can to them. Your shotgun and secondary weapon slots should be prioritized when deciding this. Bottom row keys, as well as keys you may not have already bound, like R or Q, are also great options. At the end of the day, whatever feels most comfortable for you will work best. Another great advantage of playing on keyboard and mouse is the ability to bind your use key to your scroll wheel up. When you scroll up, your bind is basically getting spam clicked over and over again. This will grant you a huge advantage over your opponent when 50-50ing a chest or floor loot item. Well, that wraps things up for today, Fortnite fam. Did you enjoy the video? Be sure to leave a like and ring that bell to stay up to date with all the latest and greatest tips and tricks that we have to offer. Also, feel free to leave a comment and let us know if there's anything you would be interested in learning more about. We hope that these tips helped you adjust or create new settings for yourself. Your settings will ultimately determine the level of play you'll be able to reach, so making sure you're not being held back is a must. Once again, this is Matt, looking forward to seeing you on our next video.